Megalodon these days is renowned throughout the world for being the scariest beast that's ever existed on our planet. This absolute monster shark shows you how scary the world really was back in those days. But was it really the ultimate warrior when it comes to ferocious predators? We're here to find out. From the biggest fish ever found to the reptile that made the seas into a no-go zone, here's 20 sea monsters that are scarier than Megalodon. Number 20. Dunkleostis Meet Dunkleostis, the most well-known member of the Arthrodire Placoderm family. Can you name any other famous Arthrodire Placoderms? Uh, like, uh, okay, we'll come back to that later. Anyway, this massive fish has an odd appearance, kind of like the offspring of a shark and a snake. In the time period known as the Late Devonian, between 358 and 382 million years ago, these creatures thrived. At their biggest, they measured around 30 feet in length and weighed 4.5 tons. Its enormous, scary jaws could open and close with as much force as a modern suction feeder, exceeding 1,600 pounds of pressure. Since this horrifying fish has only been found in North America, Poland, Belgium, and Morocco, locals in those places should be slightly concerned the next time they go chill at a waterhole. Just, you know, in case it's not as extinct as we think it is. This fish fossil was given its name in honor of David Dunkel, a prominent paleoichthyologist. There are 11 known species in this genus, but the largest and most dangerous is D. Torelli. Dunkleostis, like other placoderms, has a bone shell with two halves. It likely swam slowly but powerfully because of this. The Dunkleostis lacks teeth in favor of a beak-like structure made up of two rows of sharp bone plates. Dunkleostis, like most placoderms, may have been among the earliest vertebrates to internalize the fertilization process, as is now practiced by some modern sharks. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Time for the rare topic. This lizard creature was dug up recently in China, and archaeologists have been pouring cold water on theories about this monster and whether or not it could have been a semi-aquatic lizard. This amazing beast is rumored to have evolved to hunt a very special prey, Megalodon. This creature's capable of killing even Megalodon. This thing would slip into the water, chomp down on a huge Megalodon, and then I guess just swim very slowly back to shore, feeling a little bit bloated. Eating a whole Megalodon is probably like having eight Thanksgiving dinners in one go. Is this lizard the only Megalodono predator ever found? Do you think this monster is real? Remember to comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know what you think about what we just showed on screen. And now on to the next topic. Number 19, Chronosaurus. Chronosaurus was one of the biggest and deadliest marine reptiles in Earth's history. It ruled in the early Cretaceous seas. The name Chronosaurus comes from the Greek god Kronos, who was Zeus's father. To be precise, Kronos wasn't really a god, he was a titan, which is a type of supernatural being that came before the Greek gods. In order to keep his power, the story goes, Kronos ate his own children, including Hades, Hera, and Poseidon. Then Zeus stuck a mythical finger down Dad's throat and made him throw up his divine children. The rest is history. The Chronosaurus skeleton at the Harvard Museum of Natural History in Cambridge, Massachusetts is one of the most impressive fossils in the world. It's over 40 feet long from head to tail. Unfortunately, it looks like the paleontologists who put together the exhibit put in a few too many vertebrae, spreading the false idea that Chronosaurus was much bigger than it really was. The largest identified specimens, just about 33 feet long. Even though Chronosaurus was very big, its teeth weren't very good. They were only a few inches long, and they didn't have the sharp edges of more advanced marine reptiles that could kill you with one bite, not to mention prehistoric sharks. This pleosaur probably made up for its blunt teeth by having a powerful bite and being able to chase down its prey pretty quickly. Once Chronosaurus had a good hold on a plesiosaur or marine turtle, it could shake the animal until it was unconscious and then crush its head like an underwater melon. Number 18. Helicoprion 
The Helicoprion is a massive predator that became extinct around 250 million years ago. It's no longer a threat when we go swimming in coastal waters, which is a relief. Thanks to the discovery of its fossils, we now have a thorough understanding of the Helicoprion. Following its initial discovery in Idaho, reports estimated that the massive fish was roughly 40 feet in length. What we have here is a marine critter that's twice as large as a great white shark. The buzzsaw shark nickname is a result of the unique configuration of the teeth and jaws of the helicoprion. Only a few bones and teeth were discovered, but from those, researchers attempted to deduce why the whirl of teeth resembled a buzzsaw. In the past, the whirl was thought to be attached to other portions of the fish, but in 2013, it was officially recognized as a development from the lower jaw that enhanced the predatory abilities of the species. The helicoprion was also discovered to be a species of ratfish rather than a shark. Even so, during its peak, it was the most formidable predator in the ocean, not to mention one of the most bizarre are looking. Number 17. Leviathan Melville. Leviathan lived up to its name's reputation. It was the biggest prehistoric whale ever, and it weighed as much as the Megalodon. In the Old Testament, there was a story about a scary sea monster called Leviathan, which seems like a great name for a big whale from a long time ago. The problem is, as soon as scientists gave this name to their find in 2010, they found out it had already been used for a group of mastodons that had been named a century before. Their solution was to use the Hebrew spelling Leviathan instead of the other spelling, even though most people still call this whale by its original name. Paleontologists think that Leviathan was about the size of a modern sperm whale, with a length of up to 50 feet from head to tail and a weight of up to 50 tons, based on the length of the head, which is 10 feet. This made Leviathan, which lived about 13 million years ago, the biggest predatory whale of the Miocene. It would have been at the top of the food chain if not for Megalodon, an ancient shark that was also very big, and surely these two would have had some ding-dong battles. Number 16. Giant Stingray What was 17 feet long, had a poisonous spike 10 inches long on its tail, and was powerful enough to pull a boat full of people? Well, in this case, a prehistoric superfish that still lives in fresh and salty waters from the Mekong River to northern Australia. Stingrays have been around since a few million years after the dinosaurs went extinct. Like the sharks they came from, they've proven to be a good design, and they're still here with us today. We all know what happened to Steve Irwin. Everyone's favorite Aussie TV star who made friends with crocodiles was killed by a stingray in a freak accident. And when I say freak, I mean it was the worst kind of bad luck you could have. Since 1945, only one other person has been killed by a stingray in Australian waters. So these things don't happen very often. Still, it was a reminder to everyone that these calm, flat-bottomed sharks can do a lot of damage if they want to. In both cases, the victim was pricked in the chest by the barb on the stingray's tail, which sent the poison straight to the heart. But stingray venom is complicated, and it has a numbing effect. Ancient Greek dentists used it as a painkiller when they operated on teeth, but don't try to use it directly from the ray because that would not work. Even if one of these rays doesn't kill you, it can hurt like heck if it hits you. Don't you miss Steve Irwin even more than ever now? Number 15. Crusher Shark T. Codis was one of the most specialized sharks in the late Cretaceous seas. Its teeth were made to break shells rather than tear through flesh. Because of this, the teeth are round instead of trapezoidal and sharp, and the crown has many ridges on the surface. These ridges would have increased the bite pressure along their entire length making it easier for Tychodus to hold onto the shellfish with smooth shells and focus the bite pressure on key parts of the shell to make it easier to break. The shark's name comes from the words tyke, which means fold or layer, and dust, which means tooth. The ridges on the shark's teeth make them look like they're folded. The huge crustaceans and bivalves that lived in the western interior seaway were food for Tychodus, a predator that ate mollusks. The only things that Tychodus could probably get into its mouth were shells that moved slowly or didn't move at all. Mollusks, invertebrate, larvae, and the occasional dead Cretaceous megafauna that was down there. Even the 9-foot Platyceramus, one of the largest bivalves at the time, would have been no match for the crushing power of Tychodus. Any other animal would have found it hard to eat this tough mollusk. 9-foot bivalve. Suddenly, I kind of want clams. Number 14. Greenland Shark The Greenland Shark is yet another scary animal. Even though sharks today aren't as big as their ancestors, they can still grow to be up to 22 feet long. Most of these sharks live in the North Atlantic Ocean. 
A full-grown adult is usually about 13 feet or 4 meters long, and this size is reached at age 150. I didn't misspeak. When these guys reach adulthood, they're sharks that are already 150 years old. That means the Greenland shark parrots have had to deal with bad-tempered shark teens since the American Civil War. In fact, radiocarbon dating has shown that some Greenland sharks' eye lenses are at least 500 years old. That makes this the oldest species of vertebrate in the whole world. How about this? Some of these sharks that live in our oceans today were born when King Henry VIII was on the throne of England, and the Spanish were still fighting the Aztecs in Mexico. Even though Greenland sharks live in a remote place, they're now almost extinct because they're often caught in trawler nets. Let's hope that these sharks get a lot more chances to show how long they can live. Number 13. Scissor Tooth Shark During the late Carboniferous period, about 300 million years ago, a type of shark called Adestus lived in the Earth's oceans. It was discovered for the first time in the middle of the 19th century, and archaeologist Joseph Lady named it Adestus in 1855. It's also called the Scissor Tooth Shark. These pictures of Adestus show why these sharks were some of the strangest sea creatures ever. It was about 20 feet long and weighed about 2 tons. Its head was shaped like a dolphin and its mouth looked like a pair of pinking shears. Because tooth whorls have a strange shape and there isn't much cranial evidence from the past, many theories have been proposed about what they're for. Early ideas were that they were either protective spines on the fins or teeth. Because cartilage is hard to fossilize, it's rare to find parts of the skeleton that have been kept. This is true for most cartilaginous fish as well. The most important of these pieces is known as FMNH PF2204, which is a broken piece of a young animal that's most likely from Modestus henrici. Is that really the best name they had? I would have named it something like Jimmy. Anyway, it shows a well-preserved condocranium and jaws, as well as the upper and lower blades. Number 12. Dinosuchus rugosus. Dinosuchus was a big crocodiliform that lived between 82 and 73 million years ago. Sharks, aquatic reptiles like mosasaurs, theropods like tyrannosaurs, and other dinosuchuses may have been among its biggest predatory rivals. Most of the time, this giant ate dinosaurs and sea turtles. Dinosuchus is a cousin of alligators and crocodiles. The name comes from two Greek words that mean terrible and crocodile. The species was named and described in 1909 but the first fossils of it were found in the 1850s in North America. In the 1940s, more pieces were found, and the American Museum of Natural History used them to put together a skull as best as they could. Even though we still don't know much about Dinosuchus, better skull parts found recently have helped us learn more about this huge alligatoroid. David Schwimmer said in 2018 that the biggest people may have been bigger than we thought. That's not the guy who played Ross on Friends, by the way. On the other hand, his job on the show was being a paleontologist. Anyway, the real-life swimmer said that Dinosuchus may have been between 10.6 and 13.7 meters tall. Oh, so he meant the biggest dino, not the biggest people. Number 11. Mosasaurus. Yes, this dinosaur is a character in the movie Jurassic World. After the animals from the aviary escaped from their enclosure, the Mosasaurus ate a pteranodon that was flying over its enclosure to catch Zara Young. It also ate Zara, who was in the Petrodon's claws. Bad day for her. We think that these aquatic creatures lived between 82 and 66 million years ago, during the Campanian and Maastrichtian periods of the late Cretaceous. A fossilized skull was found for the first time near Mascrit at the end of the 18th century. It was the first proof that these marine reptiles existed. There's been a lot of talk about whether these prehistoric reptiles were related to snakes or lizards. In 1808, Georges Cuvier, who's known as the founder of paleontology, found that they did share some traits with modern monitor lizards and snakes. Mosasaur fossils have been found in North America, Antarctica, South America, Europe, and Africa. Number 10. Gecolopterus renine. If you're afraid of bugs, you might want to skip this one. A giant arthropod that's two and a half meters long and the biggest one ever found is going back into the wild. People who are easily scared will be glad to know that this long extinct ancestor of sea scorpions is only being shown in the journal biology letters though. Simon Brady of the University of Bristol in the UK and his colleagues found a Jacolopterus renine, a sea scorpion claw that was 46 centimeters long. Even though it was called a sea scorpion, the 400 million year old creature probably lived in lakes and 
and rivers and rarely, if ever, went into the sea. When another animal got in its way, it would rush forward and grab it. These creatures would tear their victims to pieces and then eat the pieces. Germany is where the claw was found. A creature with a 46 centimeter claw probably had a body length of between 233 and 259 centimeters. Or between 333 and 359 centimeters when claws and arms were added. At least this is what experts have decided. This is a really big water bug. Number 9. Basilosaurus. The whale known as Basilosaurus has long since gone extinct. Approximately 40 to 34 million years ago, it was, on the other hand, very much alive. It resembled a snake, and it could reach lengths of more than 60 feet. There were many distinguishing characteristics of Basilosaurus. Extremely long vertebrae like those of snakes, a skeleton structure indicating that it moved like an eel. It also had remnant but much shorter hind limbs, which were presumably not effective for moving the animal, but could have been used as a guide during mating. Because it lacked a melon organ, which is used by modern whales and dolphins for echolocation, Basilosaurus could not use this method of navigation. Because of this, it's unlikely that it could dive very far down. The earliest fossils of Basilosaurus were discovered in Louisiana. More have been discovered since in Egypt, Pakistan, and the US. The discovery of Basilosaurus has an intriguing backstory. In the 19th century, folks in Alabama and Louisiana reportedly used the fossilized bones of this species to make furniture. A number of these bone fossils were shipped to the American Philosophical Society for Dr. Richard Harlan to study. After examining the bones, Harlan concluded that they belonged to extinct reptiles. The name he chose for this dinosaur, Basilosaurus, is from the Greek for king lizard or king reptile. Sir Richard Owen, a paleontologist, later examined more species and concluded that the species was a marine mammal. But the moniker stuck, and now we know this massive mammal as the king lizard whale. Number 8. Liopleurodon like many other prehistoric animals found in the 19th century, Liopleurodon was named based on a small number of fossils. In 1873, three teeth, each about three inches long, were found when a French town was being built. The name comes from Greek and means smooth-sided teeth. Most people saw this aquatic lizard for the first time in 1999, when the BBC put it in its famous Walking with Dinosaurs TV series. The best guess for how long Liopleurodon is is 30 feet, but the show's creators gave it a length of nearly 80 feet, which was way too long. Walking with Dinosaurs seems to have made a mistake by extrapolating from the size of Liopleurodon's head. Pliosaurs often had heads that were much bigger than the rest of their bodies. The fact that Liopleurodon has four strong arms that look like paddles suggests it was a good swimmer. All plesiosaurs moved around with the help of their four flippers. Even though this type of propulsion isn't very efficient, a study with a swimming pool robot showed that it gives very good acceleration, which is a great thing for an ambush predator. Studies of the skull have shown that it could probably use its nose to smell the water and figure out where certain tasty smells were coming from. Number 7. Frilled Shark There's something cute about the name Frilled Shark. However, this shark is anything but cute. It's terrifying. Sharks are already terrifying creatures. Better give them space to go about their sharky business without interfering, or they could decide to rip you to bits and eat the bits. The frilled shark may be traced all the way back to the Jurassic period, making them amongst the oldest in existence. Aside from that, the frilled shark employed a rather brutal hunting strategy. It waited patiently in the water for its prey, at which point it would slither into a coiled position and strike with all of its might. That might sound like the whole explanation, but the truth is, that's only the beginning. When a shark has stunned or killed its prey, it uses its 300 reverse-facing fangs to pull the meal down into its stomach. There's no way to get out once you've entered. Researchers speculate that the shark's coiled body and gray coloration serve as a type of camouflage. The small shark is sneaky, that's for sure. And by small, I mean just seven feet of lethal ferocity from the Jurassic Age. Number six, Ichthyosaur. Another terror from the early Jurassic period was a sea creature called Ichthyosaurus. Like other Ichthyosaurs, it's thought to have evolved from reptiles that lived on land. Even though it has a phenotypic appearance, very similar to that of a modern fish like sharks, it also looks like some dinosaurs. They were very different from the bones of fish. Ichthyosaurus was much smaller than other fish-like dinosaurs called ichthyosaurids. It grew to be about 5.8 to 6 feet long when it was fully grown. 
but the bodies of some ichthyosaurs got as big as 30 feet long. At the beginning of the 1800s, its fossilized remains were first found in England. Scientists say it may have been in common waters around England and in the Atlantic Ocean. Number 5. Lead Sixthus The only thing that we know for sure about the Lead Sixthus is that it was the first marine animal we know of that fed by filtering water. Scientists think that this ancient fish did well when the number of plankton bloomed at the start of the early Jurassic period. However, they think that it died out when the number of plankton blooms mysteriously dropped at the start of the Cretaceous period. Because lead sixthus skeletons were not all made of bone, it's been hard to figure out what they were really like in terms of appearance. A lot of their skeletal system was made of cartilage that does not fossilize well. Large, mysterious pieces of lead sixthus bone have been mistaken for stegosaurian dinosaur bones more than once, so this is a strange hybrid creature that remains something of a mystery. Number 4. Titanoboa the world's biggest snake, Titanoboa, ruled tropical ecosystems just 6 million years after the feared Tyrannosaurus rex died out. In Colombia, bones of the giant boa-like Titanoboa snake were found by a group of scientists. The Florida Museum of Natural History is now displaying those bones. Based on the size of the vertebrae that have been found, paleontologists say that the snake was between 42 and 45 feet long. That would make the snake as long as Sue the most well-known T-Rex at the Field Museum in Chicago. In the movie Anaconda, a giant snake kind of like this one tried to eat Jennifer Lopez. But the Titanoboa was even bigger than the snake in that movie. Titanoboa was so big that even monster movies from Hollywood couldn't make it up. As a part of a Smithsonian promotion, a full-size model of a Titanoboa was put on display in New York City's Grand Central Terminal. I'm sure that scared a few people on the night trains. Number 3. Tylosaurus Tylosaurus was one of the most dangerous creatures in the oceans of the past. It was ready to pounce on and kill almost any smaller animal that got in its way. Its jaws were like the jaws of death, with two rows of sharp, cone-shaped teeth on each side. Tylosaurus used its nose to find food, which it then ate whole once it got it into its dangerous jaws. Two more rows of teeth on the top of the sea monster's mouth kept its prey from getting away when it opened its mouth wide for the last bite. Tylosaurus was an apex predator and one of the biggest marine carnivores of its time. It also ate a wide range of marine plants. The fossilized stomach contents of Tylosaurus have contained mosasaurs, plesiosaurs, turtles, birds, bony fish, and sharks. Bite marks and other clues show the animal also ate ammonites and giant squid. In 1987, fossils of a Tylosaurus that was at least 2 meters long were found in the Pierre Chal of North Dakota. Inside the stomach of a single skeleton was the diving bird Hesperarnus, a Bananogmius fish, and maybe even a shark. It shows the Tylosaurus ate a lot of different things, and ate a lot of them. Fossils of Tylosaurus also show that they spent a lot of time fighting one another, so this was one mean creature that took no prisoners. Number 2. Plesiosaurs Plesiosaurs were ancient sea creatures that ruled the seas during the Jurassic period. These swimming reptiles had big bodies and small heads, just like the Loch Ness Monster. They moved through the water by moving their arms and legs. They hunted fish, other reptiles, and turtles. Plesiosaurs were some of the first fossils of extinct reptiles to be found. In 1821, the name Plesiosaurus was given to the first Plesiosaurian genus. Since then, more than 100 different species have been named. At the start of the 21st century, there have been more discoveries which has helped us learn more about their bodies, their relationships, and their way of life. A common mistake is to think that plesiosaurs are dinosaurs. And plesiosaurs are often wrongly shown as dinosaurs in popular culture. People have sometimes claimed that plesiosaurs are still around today, and this could explain stories about sea serpents and reports of monsters in lakes you know the one, and oceans. The scientific community as a whole has totally rejected these cryptozoological ideas because it's based on fantasy and fake science. But people are often irrational and don't really care too much about the facts, so a lot of people still believe in Nessie. Number 1. Sarcosicus Imperator It was one of the largest reptiles in the crocodile family. It grew to be about 9.5 meters long on average and 4.3 metric tons at its heaviest. Morocco and Tunisia have found other pieces of evidence and digs are still going on in Libya and Mali. 
So what is it? It was called Sarcosicus, and it was the boss. The French scientist Albert Félix de Lamparin went on several trips to the Sahara between 1946 and 59. That's where he found the first bones. Pieces of the teeth, scutes, vertebrae, and cranium were amongst the bones. In 1964, the French found a nearly complete skull in Niger. However, it wasn't until an expedition led by American paleontologist Paul Sereno between 1997 and 2000 that most of the anatomy was uncovered. One of these pieces still had about half of its bones and most of its spine. Scientists thought that S. Imperator had a general diet similar to that of the Nile crocodile, which would have included large terrestrial prey like many dinosaurs that lived in that same area. They came up with this idea because the fully grown S. Imperator has a wider snout than the gharial and other crocodiles with narrow snouts. They also noticed that the snouts of S. Imperator and other living crocodiles don't interlock. A 2014 study of a biomechanical model of its head showed that unlike Daniosuchus, Saracosis may not have been able to do the death roll move that living crocodilians still use today to tear apart victims. In any case, it was by far the biggest crocodile ever seen, bigger than all the gators and caimans combined. Not like if you made a big ball of all of them that ever existed, but just like one by one, it's bigger than all of them individually. Which one of these do you think would have been the most difficult for Megalodon to handle? Do you believe in the Loch Ness Monster? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.